Yo, what up, players? The time has come to have some fun. Unless, of course, you're awaiting your possible arrest for a phony political prosecution. Or if you're Takashi 69 who was violently assaulted inside of the sauna area of an LA fitness in South Florida last night. Apparently, other gang members don't like it when people snitch in order to gain a lighter sentence. Who would have known? The streets are incredibly tough. And I think the assault on Takashi is really an assault on all internet trolls, which is why I stay out of LA fitnesses. I've seen safer pickup basketball games inside of a state prison than some LA fitnesses I've been to. Nowhere is really safe anymore if you actually think about it. All of the major airlines are now pushing for more inclusive cockpits of their jumbo jets, which to me makes me a little worried because I fly almost every weekend. And I don't think there's a, anything scarier than rushing to the airport Barely making it through security as you run to the departure gate and right as you walk on the plane, you look in the cockpit and you see two biracial, non-binary people about to fly your ass to San Francisco. Nope, not me. I want my pilots to suffer from extreme PTSD because they spent so much time flying in the military. If my pilot does not have a gender, I'm walking off the plane. I don't care. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to make a scene just so I could go viral like all the prima donna athletes that talk smack to the flight attendants and then get posted on World Star Hip Hop. Seriously, just imagine how that flight would go. The non-binary pilot would probably start reading from a kid's book that teaches them how to transition their sex behind their parents' back. I don't want that to happen, Spirit Airlines. I mean, I wouldn't be the pimp on a blimp you see today if it wasn't for Spirit Airlines' commitment to excellence by providing at least one physical altercation per flight, as well as the luxury of paying $8 for a warm Coke Zero. So I beg all the major airlines to please keep the skies binary. I prefer it if my pilot doesn't put a tampon in their butt so they can feel more included in society. Is that really too much to ask? I don't think so. Now that we got that out of the way, Let's get this quinceanera started, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Prime Time with Alex Stein. And we have a lovely show for you this evening. And we have an incredible studio guest. She's not only a comedian, an actress, a model. She actually lives in Austin, but she's made her a name for herself as a stand-up comedian and viral content creator with over 3 million followers on all of social media. She's been featured in movies on Amazon Prime, Netflix, as well as shows on HBO. Please welcome the fabulous and beautiful Lauren Compton. Woo! Thank you for having me. Wow, Lauren's on the show. Oh this my God. is so cool. I like this set. I feel like I'm in Star Trek. Well, it's supposed to be like a Chinese spy balloon mixed with a pimp on a blimp because that's the blimp. You know, I am the pimp. But we have to start off. We have to get the elephant out of the room. So the reason why we reached out, Lauren, is not just because you're super viral. It's because we have a plague that is plaguing society right now, and it is the gender wage gap. And as a man, I'm really frustrated that when I go out and I take nice photos, they're risque, I post them on the internet, why do women make 800 times the amount as men? Is that a fact? I don't, I don't, I don't, ba I don't live in facts. I just make up numbers and go by my feelings and my gut. <laughs> I feel like, well, this isn't a socialist society. Yeah, it's a know? capitalist society, I agree. And so there's just God-given rights that I have. Yeah. And I- I mean, listen. I, use those as a way to make money. I'm, I'm what you consider a conservative, but uh, there's two things I'd like to socialize. I'd like to socialize medicine, and I'd like to socialize people's buttholes. And I want an even playing field. I just really am frustrated that all the hard work that I put in, it makes me feel worthless as a man when a beautiful woman like this can make more money. This is an inclusive society. Shouldn't fat women make the same as skinny women? Well, if you're showing your butthole, you should be making more money because I don't show my butthole, so I should make zero money. No, there you go. And I show mine. That's all I do. That's all my pics are. It's just do me. Do you wax it? Yes, I'm like this. I'm like this the I whole time. I thought you were about it's to show us. It's literally just, this is the only thing. I don't know if the camera can zoom out. And you see my head underneath, but yeah, see, this is what I do. This is like the main picture, and I'll kind of spread it, Wrong. or we'll put some arch across Wrong. in this area. Wrong. Yeah. Great oh. flexibility. 
Yeah, well, I used to be a little bit of a yogi, but I'll be honest. And you used to be a gymnast. That's what uh, Jimmy just said. So we're both, yeah. we're both flexible. And now me. you're a swimmer. Well, uh, they won't let me compete against the women, which I think is ridiculous. So what do you think about that? What do you think about the transgender movement and biological men that transition to women? Should they be able to compete with biological females? I mean, honestly, you have a very feminine body. I do. Oh, my God. They've always said I'm childbearing hips. Everybody's always said that. And they used to always be funny. Like, oh, my God, Alex, your hips are childbearing. Your hips are childbearing. And I was like, I know. I'd love to have a bunch of kids. I can't. I'm a boy. But, oh, my God. The, everybody's told me that. I remember, like, um, the first priest that molested me, he told me that. He's like, oh, my gosh. He's like, you have a body of a girl. While he was touching me, he's like, oh, my gosh. If you would just shut up, you might be a girl. I could, your body's shaped just like one. Wow, you're bringing back a lot of memories. I'm that. just... I'm your subconscious coming to life. And also you have this great overreaction, which women also usually do. They love do. that. Yeah. They love the overreaction. Yeah, I, listen, I'm very feminine myself. I have a, I'm a soy boy. I, I don't eat meat. Is that true? That's true. I'm a vegetarian, yes. And that, so my nipples have gotten so big from the estrogen from the soy that they constantly, they, they'll just lactate. Like if I hear a baby crying, all of a sudden my body, the milk just starts spewing Oozing out. out. Yeah, and it's hot. Well, you know, it's funny. We get a beautiful lady in here, guys. We have a beautiful set. And we can't even turn on the freaking air conditioning. <laughs> so I'm over here sweating like I'm LeBron James in the NBA Finals. Whose fault is that, Jimmy? Here, give me a ah! second. <laughs> ah! I'm so mad. <laughs> Did I play the baby thing, all right? I'm sweating. I'm, I'm hot. I'm 5,000 degrees trying to do a live show on the internet, and I'm sweating Alex, like a... Alex, yes, Mom. Alex, yes, Mom. What did I tell you about throwing temper tantrums Ooh. when you have your sweaty nipples? Yes, Mom. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> you just exposed who the mother is. Great camera work. Yeah, wait, no, no. We don't know who the mother is. We don't know who the mother is. I'm hot. I need this makeshift fan. We don't know who the mother is. My mother's consciousness is uploaded in a computer. This show is going great. Wait, yeah, let's let's not show Jimmy. Do not show do not show the consciousness of my mom. And uh, just because the show's been a little off the rails, remember guys, if you want to support Alex Stein for a school board, make sure to go to Steinfortexas.com. Yes, this is how we're doing it. And I'm running. You go to Stein for Texas, Lauren. And listen, I'm done with all the sexualization of our children. If anybody's going to sexualize our children, it should be me as a school board when I go into the school board in women's lingerie. But other than that, and I'm going to have big fake uh, prosthetic boobs like the teacher in Canada. Other than me, nobody else should be allowed to sexualize children. Do you agree with that? I'm so lost. You're lost. I heard three words you L said. Listen, I was, as a, you might not know this, but as a child... When I was an actual infant, I was bit by a dog, and it shaped my brain. What the fuck? No, are you I really was. No, about? I was bit by a dog, and my <laughs> brain, what happened when it was forming, because my head was still soft. If you see, there's still little indentions, and they say because of that, I have slight autism. Is Alex Stein your real name? No, it's not. It's my name's Sarah. I was actually born a girl, but it doesn't matter because my identity. There's no warrants out for my arrest. It doesn't matter. We're not going to jail. So if any freaking police officers are trying to come here, I'm Alex Stein. I'm not Diego Garcia from Venezuela, and this is not. This is not. I just want to make sure you guys know this is not pure Chinese uncut <laughs> fentanyl. You see this? Just a little. I just a little, little there, little just, just put his nose in it. I feel fucking like, oh, awesome! Oh, I love this stuff. This stuff is good. This stuff is healthy. I'm telling you, more people need to do this. This is awesome. Do you would you like any, Lord? Because I like to share with our guests. I'm trying to quit. Oh, okay, all right. Well, Thank you, though. let me tell you something. Let me just do a little one before we go back to this show. All right, uh, oh man, I'm feeling good, I'm sweating, I'm hot. Uh, is our guest on by chance? I guess we haven't called him yet. Do we have a guest tonight? <laughs> Do we even have a guest tonight? Uh, I'm here. Alex, what? Alex, we're doing the video what? first. What? I, we're doing the video. Okay, you've dude, taken I'm too so much fentanyl. I'm so smacked out right now. I don't really know what's going on. You're doing dude. The I can't fentanyl. feel my face right now. Alex, you're, you're supposed to talk about our brave protest against the gender oh, wage yeah, yeah, gap. Yeah, yeah. Okay, play the video. Play the video. Okay, Let's play the video. Play it.
It's Primetime 99, Alex Stein and JVT, and we're here to end the massive wage gap between female Ooh. and male OnlyFans <laughs> models. We'll see what the people have to say. She has real natural breasts. She gets to okay. make more money. Okay. And because I do a tug job, yeah, we I both have a bubble. Wait, is that you? I'm glad that you highlighted me. natural breasts. That yeah, was such a compliment. Is they were more naturally that. beautiful, and that's the other thing. Is, is so many people are like, oh, where'd you get your boobs done? I'm like, I grew them. Thank you. It, thank God. My Look at this. I actually did make a little money, but these are the girls. They they kick back the most. They so. This girl has my back. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. I am investing. I'm doing it right now. I'm trying to invest in all the male OnlyFans creators by raising money and ending the gap. You also don't because look it should be equal. Don't you think women oh, and men? Oh, oh, I know. I should have had a thong on. I know. I know. You're trying to compare yourself. You just have to like. I agree. I'm never going to be on your level, Lauren. But that's zero effort. <sighs> well, you know, I'll be honest. Stuff, it's a lot of effort. You did make money. It's actually a lot of effort to look this bad, believe it or not. I'm just telling you. I'm just, you know, when you're strung out on Chinese fentanyl, it's hard to actually get yourself together. You you're know still I mean? living, I'll... so you're doing a lot better than most. That's true. I am still alive. What, Jimmy? What, can I'll... you not tell that we're having a nice conversation? I, I know, but I just wanted the point from the video that the woman make was, does... Do you wax your butthole like Lauren does? She assumed that you waxed your butthole, Lauren. So I kind of wanted to get the conversation going about it. that. Oh, I'm come sorry. on, Lauren. Oh, Everybody does the full Brazilian now. I do the full Brazilian. Everybody. You does. know what's crazy? I did laser hair removal oh, that's to permanently better. remove it. And my hair is so strong that it still grows. Wait. So, see, this is another thing. It's like I've always... Listen, I love the female anatomy. I think the vagina is the most delicate thing ever created. It's actually not. It can give birth to a baby. That's that fair. That is not that delicate. Is fair. That is fair. I'm just that saying. That takes a beating. Well, I saw a girl online. She got her legs lasered, and they like got all swollen. Have you seen those videos? No. Shut up, Lauren. You've seen those videos where they get the laser and it messes up. You've never seen laser that. hair removal. Yes, you've never on seen their legs that. and they swell up. Yeah, like you've never seen well, that. Well, maybe they drink too much alcohol before they win. There's a lot of stupid girls out there. That is. I'm just saying that laser hair removal. There's. I've seen people where they got. I, you've never seen injuries from laser hair removal. I believe that there are injuries, but I haven't scrolled through Doom Talk. Well, that's my favorite thing to do. All I like to do is look at Nick. Jimmy, are you talking again, Jimmy? Wait, what were you just about to say? Yeah, all I like to do is look at stuff that scares me and <laughs> makes my cortisol level. No, because that's a stress hormone. Cortisol is a stress hormone, and this is a little thing. I know we like to have a fun time here. We like to joke around. This is true. Mm. You can actually get addicted to being scared because your body creates a hormonal response that makes your body secrete cortisol, the stress hormone. And like with anything, when your body's used to that constantly being released, it doesn't like it when it doesn't. So you actually get addicted to looking at what I call trauma-based mind control. You're like, what does that mean, trauma-based mind control? It's the way that they say stuff in a repetitive nature so that it actually brainwashes you, even if you don't believe it. It's like safe and effective, safe and effective, safe and effective, safe and effective. You say that so many times, it doesn't matter how many people get myocarditis. All right, well, uh, we're not meant to talk about that. We need to mute that. Uh, um, uh, but remember, guys, remember. If you want to survive, you got to subscribe. Hit the like bell. I need it. Guys, I need it. I know you're in the chat. Hit the like button, guys. This fentanyl, you think this fentanyl is free? You think this is free? No, it costs a lot of money. A lot of money. So please, for the love of God, just a little bit of liking it and just subscribing. Is that too much to ask? Does it smell good? No, it it's actually smells disgusting. <laughs> it's, my nose is bleeding a little bit on the inside, but I mean, hey, no pain, no gain. Um, uh, uh, but listen, Lauren, uh, this show's kind of going off the rails. I'll be honest, I probably shouldn't have started snorting fentanyl as soon as we got live, but you learn, you live and you learn, right? Yeah. I Alex, love that can I say one question? Jimmy, what is this a Jimmy show? What the? <laughs> every time I do a bump of fentanyl, I got you in my ear too. I'm already nervous. Bro, I'm, that I'm trying is not to. A no, bump. I just, I just yeah. wanted to put on record that I'm supportive of Lauren having an OnlyFans because my wife has an OnlyFans that makes thirty grand a month. Um, she's gonna be really pissed when she finds out about okay. it. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, you secretly do the OnlyFans, but on a serious note, I gotta stop yelling. Everybody gets my mind up. Lauren actually told me a real story, and I want to get your opinion on because listen. I've dated a lot of beautiful women myself. I don't know. They say a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. I get lucky, all right? <laughs> Neither here nor there. What I'm saying is when these beautiful women, and they're on social media, there'll be like these bots or like these people in India or whatever, you know, these like content farms, computer farms. I don't even know the proper term. And they'll take every single picture and they'll basically clone your profile. Mm -hmm. So it'll look like you, right? And then they'll try to get people to like join OnlyFans or pay them or whatever. And then you told me, not only do they clone Instagrams, but they actually clone OnlyFans accounts as well. Oh yeah, people are pulling pictures and creating fake, and uh, sorry, fake OnlyFans profiles. But does that shock you? Uh, no, because there's this, uh, the Pokimane, one of the biggest creators on Twitch, 
Look, I know you're a little nervous. <laughs> Guys, I'm a little nervous, too. I'm sweating, and I'm high as a kite. But um, <laughs> what, I, what I'm saying is that there's a new thing where they do deep fake technology where they could put your face on top of somebody's body. AI. What do you think about that? I think it's taking over. It have really you, is. Have you played on chat GPT? Well, Jimmy plays on it all the time. I try not to use it because I'm anti-robots. But, yeah, what do you think it's about it? It's pretty crazy. It can completely write up anything that you want it to say. Yeah, I know. I had it write me a suicide note. It wouldn't do it. I was trying to go to Canada. I had it respond to the email, and that's why I'm here. I was like, oh, oh shit. Well, yeah, I know. It actually told her, hey, do the show. It might help your career. <laughs> I'm or like, respond to Alex Stein this email. And then it's like, yeah, I'd love to come on your show. Well, so, well, well, real quick, I have, to, I have to, once again, try to get the Chinese fentanyl off my face. I have to uh, talk about the elephant in the room. Um, I would say China. Yes, I love it whenever you play the China drop. Um, I was recently had a, I recently did an episode where we had another OnlyFans um, creator on the show, and she was a teacher that was forced to resign for it. And I was a little too nice, they said. In the chat, I'm not even looking at the chat. I bet the chat's mad. They're probably like, oh my God, you're sipping for some hot girl. So I guess my point is, is OnlyFans good or bad? Well, I don't think that anybody around kids should be... Having, on OnlyFans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's kind of. And you said you're not even that naked on it. Like now, now OnlyFans is like the, I see the girls are just in lingerie on some of them. So I, that's not that bad, right? I mean, it's up to you if you want to do it or if you don't want to do it. I have a past, like in Playboy, I was on the cover. Yeah, of she's Playboy. a Playboy playmate, a beautiful lady. So I guess it's like, hey, I think it'd be weird if I was like just a stand-up comic that was like, you know what? I'm gonna go on OnlyFans just for fun. Yeah, but there's there's girls that are stand-up comedians I know right now. Uh, Carrie Freehand, who is like you know a comedian. I don't know if you know her. She isn't mm. only she's she's a comedian that kind of started OnlyFans, and that's kind of that's boosted her. You know that's yeah. You know I'm saying it's helped her out a lot. That's how I know her. And now she plays all the clubs. She plays a comedy seller, so she's so it helps her out. And listen, I don't want to make this show. Oh, this is pro. Start taking naked pictures of yourself. But one thing, this is another thing too. And this is this is not trying to make an excuse, but Lauren, I look at it like this. In the NFL. There's oftentimes players, they make it to the top level, they barely escape through college, they get to the NFL and like, they don't even want to be an NFL athlete, but they have to because they were born like six foot seven, 300 pounds, and like you're built to be an offensive right, tackle. I get it. Look, I didn't That's what I'm always, saying, you're built to be a beautiful model. I didn't always want to be a playmate. I wanted to be a Victoria's Secret model, but I'm not 5'7 with an eating disorder. I'm five foot three with all natural double Ds, so even God was like, eh, she's a little less angel and a little more porn hub. <laughs> You know, and so I can't, I cannot argue with the gifts that God has given me. I'm not on Pornhub, but that's a fun joke that I like to tell on stage. But I will also say that, I mean, I, talking about talents and stuff, I, before I was even on OnlyFans, I was on TikTok mm -hmm. and I was going viral. I have like videos that have north of 80 million views. Oh yeah, you're Zero dollars. What? And so I'm like spending time creating this content that's going viral. I, I created the Wipe It Down Challenge. ESPN took that video, made their own commercials. Hilton Hotels, Will Smith recreated it. All these people recreated it and made tons of money off of it. And I made nothing and I'm like, dang it. So after time and time again of hundreds of millions of views, I was like, Let's make some money. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and, and, you know, we all have bills to pay, but like people are gonna say, "Oh, Alex, you're too nice." Da, da, da. I actually have a libertarian mindset. If you're an adult, you should be able to do whatever you feel is, I guess, right for your moral compass. But like at the same time, there's gonna be people, oh, "Oh, I don't like this. I'm, you know, this is against my religion. This is against this." So, what do you do with the the religious zealots? I'm sure give you any kickback. Not really. I mean, luckily, my following is. Pretty substantial. Yeah, it doesn't so matter. So they, they give me this little section where all my trolls and haters go. Yeah, because you have to have that trolls. That I never have to see. See, I have trolls, so you have to have trolls. So is it like, what is it? They go to like the do you think requests it's girl? Do you think it's, I don't. Do you think it's girl trolls or guy trolls more? Um, Probably guys. See, I would think it would be girls that are kind of jealous. You know, because I see, this, this is why I say this. I follow, you know, Instagram influencers all the time. And... Every single one, it's like every week, it's post like, you don't have to tell me you didn't like my shoes. Like, you don't have to tell me, you know, I, I like, they can tell that they're getting a lot of kickback from other girls. Is yeah. What, is it the impression that I get? Well, I get a lot of guys that will send me a nice message and they'll be like, oh, you're so beautiful. I love your content. And then I won't reply. Yeah. And then they'll be like, like fuck you. You're yeah. an asshole. I hope you burn in hell. And I'm like, okay, cool. I just didn't see the message, but you don't have to <laughs> <laughs> wish me like the worst luck ever. But yeah. thanks.
Well, I'll tell you something. Being horny is a hell of a drug, and it'll make a man do some really... Is it stronger than fentanyl? It is. Being horny, yes. I can tell you why, because Bill Clinton risked it all for, you know, some 16-year-olds on Epstein Island, and I don't think he risked it all for... And he did cocaine, too, actually. Uh, Roger Clinton, Bill Clinton's brother, was actually arrested for cocaine possession. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah, yeah. While well, he was governor, and he couldn't give him a pardon because there was, like, just overwhelming evidence. So, yeah, so I'm just saying Bill Clinton uses coke, but I think sex is his even worse uh, vice. So, yeah, I think being horny, you know, is when you start thinking with the wrong head, you make wrong decisions. But being horny is natural. It's just what happens under the desk should have stayed under the desk. I mean, Monica Lewinsky, I mean, you know... <laughs> Why not? All right, now we got to welcome on comedian, writer, self-described, unwoke superstar, the one, the only, Michael Loftus. Welcome to Primetime with Alex Stein. Hey, thanks for having me. This is a wonderful show. Like, I came in and I'm learning so much about, like, OnlyFans <laughs> uh, and, and miracle butthole hair that comes back even after it's lasered. You're welcome. The fentanyl thing. I'm having a, I'm having a blast. Congratulations on the show, man. Well, thank you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're doing quite well. We have, like, a lot. Like, ever since I got paid, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just spending most of my paycheck on it. I don't know. I mean, Michael, we can't really do it through the through the computer, but I'm telling you, man, you call me up. Yeah, here, let me just see if I, I can put it That's down there. That's only little, most uh, of uh, your paycheck? Yeah, this is only There's most more? of more? Yeah, uh, but, but Michael, tell me about this. And I, this is the beautiful Lauren Compton, uh, multi-million followers, uh, yes. natural breasts delivered by... God himself. Created the creator, created a, a yes. doozy here. So Michael, what do you say about the fentanyl crisis infecting the world? Because honestly, I don't think it's that bad. Well, I'm a little bit more concerned, you know, and it seems like uh, it could be solved like with, I don't know, a wall. I still want that. I, I still want that wall thing that Trump was talking about, but I want the big one. I want like a big son of a bitch that you can see from space. I want a casino. I want shopping, ample parking. We can have a roller coaster goes down. Like, let's do something with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We should have it big enough. You could put like a drive-in movie theater and you could just like drive up to it. You can just sit there and we can just watch La La Land. That's one of my favorite movies. So, Michael. You'd have, you could have different, different movies playing on different sides. We right. can have every movie, every Disney movie. I mean, just you can just go to a different portion of the wall and watch your favorite kids movie with subtitles. Okay, Michael, I have to ask you this. I ask every guest with the name Michael. Do you think Michelle Obama was born a boy? I don't know. I do know this. I've seen the clip of her dancing on, on Ellen. Yeah. And that's, something is in there. And that's not a microphone pack, right? You get those little... Those little microphone battery things, and and unless she had like a dick shaped that one right battery here. pack, that, that's that. You don't put the microphone pack in your dog. You don't put it there. That's not where it goes. It goes in the back pocket. That's one hundred and one, Lauren. What is right? You look, make friends with your sound guy. No, I am friends. We're actually dating <laughs> secretly. It's a long story, but he's married, so let's not try to get that out in the open. But. Uh, I heard a I heard a joke. There was like this public school. I guess it's not really a joke. It's more of a tweet, Michael. But there was a public school, and it was like in Spokane, and there was a Muslim student. And of course, I'm just stealing this tweet all the way. I hope I uh, reiterate this correctly. And the Muslim student told his elementary school teachers that he has two dads. And everybody in this like Washington school is like, "Oh, that's so great." They like wanted. They were like, "Oh, gender inclusive, this and that." And then they did a parent-teacher conference to talk to the parents, and it turned out that he, the dad had two wives. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about that, Michael? About having did two wives? Did they still want to celebrate? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I, see, I, see I, I talk about this, and now I need to follow up, because I want to know, too. Did they still have the party for him? Did they still give him the, you know, whatever, the pizza they, party? They still had the, the halal pizza <laughs> and a bunch, of, a bunch of balloons blown up. You know what? Congratulations still. That's great. That's very woke and forward thinking. <laughs> well, Michael, what do you think the biggest problem that is plaguing our country? I know there's a laundry list. You know, I mean, you can talk about the war in Ukraine. You can talk about the immigration crisis. You can talk about the drug crisis. You can talk about the shadow presidency. But what do you think is the number one problem plaguing everyday Americans? I really, I really think it's just, just giant government. Like it is, it is in every aspect of our lives. I used to consider myself, well, I, I kind of, you know, I lean to the right. But man, the more you find out, the more you become like straight up libertarian. I want to rip it all down. I want no more FBI. Get rid of the CIA. Yep. Get rid of the Department of Education. I'm, I'm ready for like straight up anarchy. 
I, I, I really, I'm kind of following in line with what you're saying. So, you know, you actually wrote for one of the, I think one of the best comedians out there, a guy named Kevin James, who is incredibly talented, not just a stand-up, but obviously an incredible actor. So is Kevin James conservative at all? I mean, I know he's friends with Joe Rogan. You know, here, here's the funny thing, man. Like, uh, Kevin can fight. Like, he did that He's a movie. real fighter. Yeah, UFC fighter oh, or whatever. yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to say anything until Kevin says it's all right because he will <laughs> track me down and roundhouse kick me. He's a big boy, but he can throw a punch. Listen, uh, there's a there's a ton of conservatives in Hollywood, an mm -hmm. absolute ton, and they're all terrified because if they do say their political beliefs, th they'll be canceled and it'll affect their box office, you know. And uh, it's horrible because you think Hollywood and like stand up comedy too. I think most of us are conservative at heart because you go by yourself out to L.A. and you're like, oh, I'm going to work hard and, and really struggle and hopefully I'll get lucky. But through hard work and determination, I'll be successful. So they they have this this trajectory. And then as soon as they get wealthy, they're like, oh, you know what? We should be socialists. Yeah. Like Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey drives me absolutely. I'm sorry you feel guilty because you're rich and successful. But all of a sudden, I wonder what the exact dollar amount is, right? Is it is it $40 million? And then you go, ah, fuck it, I'm a commie. Well, <laughs> oh, I forget which comedian. Uh, actually, I forget which comedian was talking about it. But he was saying a lot of these Hollywood people, even though they have a ton of wealth, they don't even control their own wealth. So, like, they don't even feel that wealthy. Like, they, uh, they obviously, that's why they have to toe the line because at any minute, they know they can lose it all. So even though they have made $40 million, they don't feel like they have $40 million as if, like, a person that owned a plumbing company and built, you know, something from the ground up. It's different when a celebrity accumulates wealth really fast. It actually makes them more controllable. What do you think about that? Dig it. I saw, I saw a headline the other day where uh, Jewel, you know, Snaggletooth. Of course. Uh, She's she still says hot. her mom. She's still, Jewel is still hot, though. Come on, Mike. She's you, a smoke show. Yeah, I mean, the oh, snaggle too. I, I thought I you said that, that now. I was like, Jewel's a, a, a 10 or 9. She's smoke. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Michael. And the Lord gave her that snaggle tooth. The Lord was like, here's some uh, double Ds for you. I'm going <laughs> to give her an adorable snaggle tooth. Her mom, I guess her mom stole $100 million from her. And oh. Jewel isn't mad. Wow. What did her mom spend it on? Does her mom have a gambling problem? That's what I don't get. Is where, where these parents steal Macaulay Culkin's what money? What do you do with $100 million? Yeah, I know, because even if you just put it in, like, a, a normal bank account or something, like a CD, you're going to get, like, a, a 4 or 5% return. If you just put that in an account, right. like, what? You you would have money for you the rest could of your maybe, life. You could maybe buy Alex some more fentanyl. Well, I got plenty of that. Honestly, if any if anything right now, I need some <laughs> new rims for my truck. If I ever buy anything, I'd like some 24-inch uh, rims. But... That's neither it's here nor there. Yeah, I love. Oh my gosh, I want that thing bright red when I drive. I love Fast and the Furious. I I'm telling you, one time I actually got kicked out of a PF Chang's for uh, I don't want to say anything, but I actually dr <laughs> I drove my car into a PF Chang's, and uh, it's a long story short, but I did get in a lot of trouble, a lot of legal trouble. So I just want to apologize to the manager, Gary. And I'm sorry that your daughter died that evening. All right, uh, Michael. Uh, um, before we let you go, you're on. Fox, you're on all the talking, you know, you're on all the talking head type shows. How do you rate your experience on the primetime with Alex Stein show? I'm going to give this a uh, 10 out of 10. I'll I was, take it! it! It was, it's just a wonderful introduction. I'm telling you, you guys had me from Jump Street. The <laughs> feed goes live. There's furry buttholes and OnlyFans <laughs> and fentanyl use and cuss words are flying. This is a breath of fresh air. The world needs more of this. Well, Michael, how can we support you? How can they find you? And what's the best way that we can, you know, uh, change the culture war that we're currently fighting in? I'm doing a show called That Show Tonight. It's sketch comedy. We have a different guest host every week. Our next our next show is uh, March 31st. My buddy Dave Landau is going to be our guest host. Dave's great. People need to go to thatshowtonight.com. Check it out. It's just... It's just funny. It's anti-woke. It's like Saturday Night Live before they became communists. <laughs> okay, and before you go, Michael, define woke. This is the new thing. They're like, oh, you can't define woke. Define it for us. Uh, woke is the anti-Ben Shapiro. Woke <laughs> is the realization that feelings don't care about your facts. It's just 100% feelings. 
Wow. I, I, I tend to agree. And I also think it's like uh, there's a saying, you know, they say woke is meaning like you're awake to the, the re realities of life. You know, like if you're woke, you want to defund the police. But for me, I think like if you're woke, you're really like asleep. You're under some sort of trance. You're not awake because like uh, in the truth or world, I'm a 9-11 nut. I'm a space landing, space moon landing nut freak. Uh, you know, I'm just saying I love all conspiracies, right? And I'll, yes. And I, but what... My whole point is, it's just, we live in a world of lies. And in the truther community, people want to wake up to it. And most people don't, I think, when they're watching this normal show on TV, they don't even want to wake up to what's really happening. They just kind of want to watch the program and be hypnotized into believing the status quo. That is true. And you and I need to have a conversation about Operation High Jump. I want to oh, go full well, yeah, on. So you love Operation High Jump? See, you're my man, Mike. I'm a BC. They'll never talk about a General Admiral Byrd. We can't even talk about it. I don't even, don't even get me started on uh, Operation High Jump. The people in the chat, it's going to take all day. But hey, Michael, you're a like-minded pimp on a blimp. I give you the pimp on a blimp certification. You're welcome on the show anytime. It's always been a pleasure. And say Let's goodbye to Laura it. and the beautiful one before you go, please. Congrats on the OnlyFans. I support you, and sorry about your furry butthole. Great. It's still growing, but hey, we tried to laser it <laughs> off, but hey, you know, it's that's good genetics. See you, Mike. Have a good one, you guys. All right, I folks. I don't even think I said hi to that guy. I know. I want, I want you to talk more. You're the, like, I'm the ugly, overweight guy doing all the fit and all. You're the one that's supposed to be pretty and nice. Like, uh, Yeah, let me, do I need to be here? No, yes, we need you here. More, you're more important than me for the rest of the show. <laughs> but our next, you know, uh, we're coming up, guys, we just want to tease it. We have, uh, we're going to do the, guys, if you want to buy the most pimp merch, make sure to go to pimponablimpshop.com. we got the best shirts, sweaters, hats, mugs, stickers, you name it. We freaking got it. Tell everyone you love Big booty Latinas, or that you're a plant-based pimp, or you know, you're just, you know, you like Alex Stein. And if you go shop right now, you're gonna get 10% off with the code BLAMP10, my friend. So go get some merch. All right, all right. So next I want to get to um you guys really enjoyed when we kind of went and we took a stroll down memory lane, as we like to call it, and we watched one of my early viral videos. And so tonight, Lauren. Yeah. We keyed up another video. Jimmy, as you guys can see right here, if we can point there, you see this little this little outfit made me a legend. This is what changed <laughs> the world. This is why I got spit on at Penn State. This is why they call me transphobic. All because of this teeny, weeny, eeny, bitty bikini. Is that how you say it? I don't know what the saying is, but this is actually a one piece. It's actually very flattering because I have a feminine body, like you said. So we're gonna watch that, and I wanna get your opinion and I want to tell you a little backstory and what was going through my head when I did have to tuck my junk and put on women's clothing and speak at the Plano City Council. So you'll Hello. see. How are you guys doing, Council? Um, so my name is Alexandria Stein, and I'm here today to call out transphobia Alexandria. here in Plano. The Alexandria, I'm duh. Being I missed that from part when I watched it. In the city of Plano Swim League against the women, even though it's clear I can't that watch I reassigned my hard. gender last week. This like, for example, great. do I look, look at that like body. a man? Look at that Obviously body. Not. This is a woman. But they're not going to let me swim all you have to and do compete against the ladies McDonald's because of transphobia. Today. So what I need you to guys to do is to have that body, you yes. You earned it. Like oh, Leah trust Thomas. me. I'm sucking those straws. She's an on. NCAA champion. The not best easy. swimmer they don't in college themselves. today. I can't get a scholarship unless I'm able to send a recruiting tape to Does these colleges. Does that have, like, fake boobs so it? did. It had little cups, yeah. But I had B cups myself, so they kind of... What comes out of you or... It was a little bit of both. Does this look like an unfair advantage? There's nothing unfair about this. I mean, look at me. You can see what really looks good. Look at my arm fat jiggle. This is really good. Watch, I'm about to turn around. Make sure to look under my biceps where a man would normally have muscle. I have this flabby thing called fat. Gender bias. And I don't like gender bias. I'm on hormone therapy. So my estrogen levels are so my high chest for the room. That was one of the but you guys are going to sit here. You're not going to take me seriously. Had, like, you're going to laugh at me. I'm trying to compete. From, from and yes, I was born a boy. So, so what? what? Guys, this is 2022. It doesn't feels. matter what you're <laughs> born. We She's have Kintaji Brown Jackson oh even says. Great, great she doesn't show. even know what a woman is. So then I'm a woman. So that's what you guys have to do. If the Supreme Court justice is on my side, then why can't I get the same from the Plano City Council? That's the problem. Is I come here and I'm still a victim of transphobia. Yet we have champions like my girl Leah. Uh, my sister, my and sister. she is she gets to win, but I don't. 
Why not? That's what I'm asking you. Why not? Why can't I swim against the ladies? Why are we having a transphobic Look world that where bag. I just want to compete against the ladies? Damn. Why are you saying that I'm not a biological woman? Clearly, I look no, like a biological a woman. Because, I, mean, I mean, come on. I it's been hours tucking this thing in. Thing. Give me a break. I should be able to swim. And I'm on so much hormone more. therapy, I don't even know left or right anymore. So I'm doing oh, this. I don't have an unfair advantage. No way. So I need you guys to stand up. We have a city issue, Rick. And we can actually fix this and let me compete against the ladies. I'm sick of these women. Oh, you're you're on the like Yeah, right. The and Why I'm mentally ill, and they won't even let me compete in the Special been, Olympics. You know, so go yeah. figure. Think There's about that. I can't that compete know. in the Special Olympics, and I can't compete against women. What kind of bigotry is that? Are you guys going to let that stand? I wouldn't let that stand. I if wouldn't. I were y'all, I would stand up for me, because in the future, they're going to write these in the history book, and they're going to have to decide, decide what side Plano was on. Were they transphobes? Or were they trans positive? And obviously, I'm trans positive. So that's what obviously. I want. I want you guys to wake up to what's going on in the world and tell the city of Plano Swim League to let me compete against the ladies. I've been on hormone blockers for nearly two weeks now. And like I said, I'm so messed up from them, I'm probably going to lose anyway. But I can send that tape to a college, and I might get a scholarship, Julie. That's so true. don't look at me with your eyes, looking at me all mean. I'm out here trying to change for you. This is left, women's so rights. Yeah, I'm standing up for women's rights. Thank Time's you. Up. It's Primetime Stein on Instagram if you guys want to learn how to swim against the ladies. Thank you all so much. How did you get this recording? Well, you're getting the every city, city council meeting. They have to they have their own live stream. So, see, Lauren, this is my favorite thing. is, is uh, 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 Lauren doesn't know everything about Primetime 99, Alex Stein, which is kind of sad. Really, you should uh, have read my Wikipedia page at least. But uh, what I'm saying is I'm known for going to the city councils, Lauren. And the best, I've watched them. Oh, I don't know. No, but what I'm saying is the best part about them is that they do their own live stream, right? Right. So, so it's like uh, people... Sometimes I'll film their reactions, but they do all the production work for me. That's, that's why great. It's, that's why it's so brilliant. And that's why other people that, are, that go and speak, there's people that go viral for speaking serious. There's people that go viral that are copying me that are wearing like cat outfits. There's all types of different moments you can go viral because they live stream it. So it's brilliant. And then, when, but the problem is like you saw in that Plano one, they didn't have the overlay. They stopped doing the overlay because about a week before that, I did a video that got millions of views where I went insane for the Ukraine and I rapped about Vladimir Zelensky. So my point is, is like when they put their government overlay on it mm -hmm. and it's like their government cameras, it looks so real. That's half the reason why it goes viral. Yeah. Because it's like their footage. Well, I mean, your science project, like high school, Sociology experiment. Yeah, that did pretty good too. It did okay. I mean, it's never enough. You know this, and this is the other thing. Is, and listen, the, the fentanyl is a strong drug, guys. But one of the strongest drugs is going viral because you get addicted to it. Because then you're like, oh crap, I made this. I made this video and it got a million views. And you make another video, it's, I got ten thousand views. You're like, what? Yeah. What? So how I do fell you, off. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Because it is kind of a drug. I know. I you know I feel the same way. I posted a video. My late my second to last video on TikTok has like forty seven million views. And then I posted a bit on my stand up and it got yeah. like twenty two thousand. Yeah, see, that's nothing like, to you. Yeah, I know. And I just a... fight it. I refuse to, to delete it because I'm like, this is funny. And I'm not no, going to delete, delete it. No, don't delete it. Don't delete it. So it's up there, and I just get no traction on that. And I'm just. If you posted it, I say leave it up. Like, even with a tweet, like, I mean, I guess I have deleted a tweet. I'm not going to say I've never deleted a tweet, but it's like the internet, it always exists. So yeah. why take it down? I know, but you have to listen to the audience. Like, if they don't think it's funny, you then, take like, it down? I've taken some stuff See, down. I hate the comment section. You listen to the comments. No, I know right now they're going to leave a bunch of mean comments. You can't help but watch the views if the viewer count isn't there. I know. But it's weird It's weird what makes a thing go viral, though, because, like, like uh, we didn't watch this. But my original video that went so viral, I'm doing this cringe rap where I'm like, uh, Dr. Fauci, give me that ouchie. When I left, I was like, this video is going to suck. It's not going to, nobody's going to watch it. And it was like one of my biggest videos really? at the time. So is it with you like to do surprise videos go viral for you or do you kind of know in advance like this one's going to be a hit? Um, it depends on, I think that the key for me when I know something is going viral is after I film it and I edit it and it takes me hours to do. Yeah, for a one minute video it takes out. People hours, don't realize that, right? hours and hours. And so then I look at it and if I want to rewatch it again and I laugh and I want to rewatch it again and I laugh and I keep laughing and rewatching, that's viral. That's true, yeah. I, I, that actually makes sense, because like if I watch my video, because I can't watch myself, me watching that, I'm not just saying this, obviously I'm a narcissist, I'm a freak, you know, that loves uh, himself more than anything, but even me, I get sick of watching myself. Do you ever feel that way? Like, you're just like, uh. No. You do like watching yourself? Yeah, I do.
I'm proud of myself though. I work really, really hard at the stuff that I do. Yeah, I don't know. Like, even when I watch his podcast back or I watch anything I do, I'm just like, oh. Well, you're doing fentanyl on your podcast. Ah, that's actually cool. I'm proud of all shit I do. That's actually cool, doing fentanyl. I'm one of the first podcasters to do that. I don't know how you have a show, to be honest. Don't worry about how or why. I'm shocked. Blackmail. And don't, you know what? Stay shocked because the world is going to be shocked when our next guest comes on. I don't know if he's ready yet. But have you heard of Sean Spicer before? Mm Mm-mm. Well, I don't know him other than he was on the show Dancing with the Stars, and that's my favorite show. My biological father, Tucker Carlson, was actually on Dancing with the Stars. Did you know that? I thought you looked a little like him. Yes, he is my dad, and I've been trying to get his semen for like, I don't know, like six months now, and there's uh, no go. So what is the best method that you use in order to gain a man's semen without his permission? I, um... You know, this is a f- weird, weird It's a weird question. I'll admit it's a weird question, but Have please, you heard about... It's valid. ...about that girl that tried to get pregnant with Drake, and she took... He put Tabasco sauce in the condom that had cum in it, and then she took that cum and put it in her vagina, and then had a crazy, freakishly awful burn I'm and very, had to yeah. go to the hospital. That was my ex-girlfriend, Deborah. I know. She did the same thing to me. It's so, disgusting. And, yeah... No, I actually There's didn't hear ways. that. So you're telling me she got a used condom out of the receptacle, out of the trash I mean, can. it was used on her. But what's even weirder about that story, it's still, what's weird about that story... Is that Drake had Tabasco sauce in the And he went bathroom. and picked up the thing and put it in, I mean, dumped the condom out. I mean, what? That's not... I'm going to take it. Here, lie down real quick. He's Lauren, scared. Lauren, He's scared. Uh, Lauren, just go full extension Just a bunch quick. of little Drake babies? Who does he think he is? He's not... Who's that guy that married Mariah Carey? Uh, that rich billionaire guy? No, the, the other Brown? guy that has like 500 children. Oh, uh, 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 Nick uh, Cannon. Nick Cannon, yeah. yes. Cannon. See, he didn't, Drake didn't want to be the next Nick Cannon. Well, hey, that's Alex. Like, what? Lauren, I have to interrupt you. I have some bad news. Alex, you're going to be very mad and might send me back to Canada. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Sean Spicer, uh, apparently he's booked for tomorrow. You're kidding. <laughs> I just texted his rep. He's like, I said tomorrow. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you said today. Should have had chat GPT. Wait, you're kidding me, Jimmy. You're I'm... trolling. So we had all the, the Dancing with the Stars, man. Oh, we're going to do I this. We're gonna do... To so you. now we don't know how to read a fucking calendar now. I'm so now have to we don't check know the email how to tell the date. I'm going to go through the email and see if I was wrong or the rep was wrong. I Let's don't, do it right I now. I don't care. You were wrong. We thought he was on the show. You are wrong. It's not Sean's fault. Sean's not the one running a live show right now. He's the one that dances on Dancing with the Stars. Okay, Jimmy. okay. I'm reading the email right now. She's very confusing. She said, Sean is available tonight for original time and tomorrow night if you still have time for him. I was trying to get double booked. Us. I read to that as wrong. tonight because she said what? tonight. I re- wait, wait, wait. An attention whore wait. wants two nights? <laughs> Jimmy, how how is it, it that we can't even read an email and know when our guests are going to be on the show? Tucker I mean, is Carlson, Brandon back there? It was a little confusing. That. To they read. Tonight, Reading is confusing. And tomorrow night. Reading is confusing. Was it written in Chinese or was it written in English? Let's say China. Uh, well, that answer, I guess it was Chinese. Okay, Jimmy, let me tell you something. Didn't Jimmy go to Princeton? Yeah! Even she knows you! You're so annoying, Princeton! I mean, you're so annoying, Jimmy, that even Lauren, <laughs> who doesn't even follow you, doesn't even know that you exist, knows that you went to Princeton! Oh my well, gosh! That's all he talks about. I know, I won't shut up about it, but that's because they're good at basketball right now. Did I mention that they're going to the Sweet 16? Did okay. I mention that at all? Okay, no, let's just stop stop showing Jimmy. Now let's go back to the show. Let's also, go. my name's JVT <laughs> okay, for the yeah. millionth time! Yeah, you're going to have to earn Whoa. that name. <laughs> Next time you want to be called JVT, why don't you book the guests on the proper day? And honestly, I'll be honest, I am really mad. And uh, after this uh, show, Brandon will be taking your job more than likely. So. Ooh, blue line. Matter. So, well, I had to put some blue marks. Actually, let me get a little closer to the. I don't want my mic pack to fall off. So, Sean Spicer actually wrote a kids' book, guys, and this is one of my favorite kids' books. This is called "It's Perfectly Normal," and this is a book for kids ages ten and up. And in this book, they have they have they have pictures like this showing you about. Uh, let me read a little bit about it. Outside and inside, our sex organs. Everyone, babies, kids, teens, and grown-ups are born with what many people call sex organs. 
many of our sex organs, but not all, are also our reproductive organs. Oh, wow. The organs that make, make a baby once our bodies have grown up and have become adult bodies, some of our sex organs are on the outside of our bodies. So this is what we're teaching little kids is how to hump. Why? I mean, is it not enough to poison him with freaking fentanyl? Now we have to give him new cartoon drawings? I mean, guys, this is what's going on. So what do you think about stuff like this and the sexual indoctrination of children? Uh -huh. That is how you shave your butt crack. This is, look at this. There's no hair. This is a cartoon image. I know we're making it. You see there, there's no hair. That's a, and we had to put tape over this, guys, because we couldn't even show this on YouTube without getting censored. And I, honestly, I don't know, is the custodian gonna be able to clean up all this fentanyl, Jimmy? Can you check? Because the, the set, You're gonna let Jimmy find that out? Well, because Jimmy's gonna be you the next- You still trust that guy? No, I'm asking him because he's gonna replace the custodian because he's going on custodian duty, Jimmy. You're not producer duty. Oh, he got downgraded to yes, janitor. Yes, yes, so I hope you know how to use Lysol. I hope you know how to use a brush and a mop, Jimmy. You're gonna use that Princeton education when you're, you know, that elbow grease cleaning up all the crevices and all the fentanyl because, listen, the cops are gonna be here any minute. <laughs> I don't wanna to go to jail. So you need to get your ass over here and start vacuuming as soon as you can, but uh, we'll wait till the end of the show. So Lauren, what do you think so far? I know that you don't think that I deserve this show, which a lot of people are saying probably, and uh, you know what? They're all wrong. I'll tell you why. As Tucker Carlson's biological son, the throne is actually, it's just given to me. I just get it, no matter what. Right, so why did you ask me what I thought? Well, because I kind of want to just hear what it is, what your answer is. Say something positive. I think that you, as a female, Yes? Should have an equal right. To do what? God, it's so hard. Equal right to do what? To swim? To compete? To sell my no, butthole? No, I think if you, if you want to have a show and you're entertaining enough, you're very entertaining, I think you should have a show. Okay, she, she said something nice. And listen, Lauren, you know, uh, you deserve a show as well. I mean, you're a beautiful comedian. You're, you've been in movies. So tell me this. Have you ever... That's so nice. Have you ever been propositioned? Because everybody knows the old story about the Hollywood casting couch. Oh, you get the damsel in distress. She just comes to Hollywood. She wants the acting role. Her whole life, she wants to see her name in lights. Oh, sweetie, pull up that skirt. Come down here. Get on your knees. Do a little herky jerky. Have you ever had that proposition? Herky jerky? You know, a little bit of this and that. Yeah. I'm just saying, has you ever been propositioned on the casting couch? I have. Really think that I haven't had that happen to me? Oh, I guess that would be naive for me to think that. So that happens a lot. So, so you think that a woman, even let's say she's untalented, and I'm not calling Gwyneth Paltrow untalented, but she is. Do you think that she could actually sleep her way to the top? I think that there are girls out there that are more than willing to sleep their way to the top. And so the Me Too movement was a little confusing to me because I, a lot of those women that were like, oh my God, he had sex with me. She, they also were like, have sex with me. Yeah, I think that's, and, and now we're- I'm like, not saying all of it. Like, I want to make a very strong Harvey Weinstein is a rapist. Yeah, we're, we're, Rape we're, is different, but yeah. there are girls, plenty of them, that will be like, please pick me out of the lineup so that I can get ahead. Yeah, they call that the pick me girl. And honestly, like in today's society, I keep saying honestly too much, but we have this like pro-sex movement where, you've, have you been seeing that like whatever podcast where mm -mm. it's been going viral? Well, it's this guy, he's doing a great podcast where he gets a lot of girls that, you know, some of them are really wild sexually and they'll talk about their body counts and kind of put them on blast, but just like the nature of the sexual degeneracy of young women is almost more sexually aggressive than young men. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds crazy, but the way these girls Alex, talk. Alex. Yes, mom? I gotta, or that's I gotta not my mom. Job. This is not your mother. This is Brandon. Brandon, okay, yes. <laughs> uh, first of all, I heard you yelling at Jimmy yes. from across the hall. We talked about this. I, I didn't make fun of his wiener, Brandon. I just made fun of his poor work skills. Uh, okay, well, look, it's not his fault Sean Spicer can't read. First of all, we know Sean Spicer can't read, but either can Jimmy. So, I mean, that's two all wrongs right. don't make a right. Just because neither <laughs> of them can read, Look, that doesn't make Jimmy he right. He went to Princeton. He's basically illiterate. They're the illiterates of the Ivy League. But I know. We love him nonetheless. We only took gender studies there. It was an Ivy League Do school. not. Just Jimmy, yeah. shut up. Okay, so what, what is going on, guys? So here's the Roll. thing. Okay, you know, because I have to stand up for my fellow producers. Oh, you my. know, And I just want to say right now, Alex, think about it this way. Are you being a man AOC would want to bang? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, no, no. Nope, yeah, no, I guess you're, you're right. right. Technically, she's no. She's classy, and I called her office and I left a message saying you are acting up, and because of this, not look. 
Alex, I know that you are here to be slightly offensive, but I've already lost. Slightly? I've already lost two friends who have to go independent, and I cannot see a third do it. So this is a warning they to you. And if you push us any further. What's going to happen, Brandon? If I push unionize. you any further, what's going to happen? Like, I'm scared. Oh, Ooh. we will unionize. Ooh. We will unionize. Oh, I'm so scared. Call Papa Glenn. I will Break call something. Papa Glenn. And oh, why don't you tell call? Papa Glenn that I'm high on fit? No, why don't you do it? Right, right. We're unionizing. The producer's union. We're walking off set. Wait, wait a minute. You're walking we off set. We have a set. list of demands. You're not walking we off set. We have a list of demands. In the middle of it, Brandon. No. I'm sick of this. No. Sick no. Of this. Get back here. You no. Have, you have what is this? 30 days. What is this? Demands? What is this? Get, get out of here! Get out of here, Jimmy! Get out of here! What is this? Penile positive workplace? Lauren Compton's phone number? I need your phone number. Baja Blast Mountain Dew? Mo Money? And Mo Bitches. Now, I can give you Mo Bitches. I can give you Mo Bitches, because you know what bitches love? China White, they love this stuff, so uh, we'll be able to take care of that. So what do you think about the producers walking out, Lauren? No, do not take the, and now Lauren's gone, it's only me. <laughs> it's only me, okay, come back, Lauren. So this is our big surprise. I got Lauren a little Louis Vuitton gift, and then we got this too. <laughs> Jimmy, come back, can you hear my horn? Jimmy, if you can hear this horn, I'm sorry. Sounds like your mom. I know, no, my mom's much better sounding than that. All right, that's the Jimmy Bell. Whenever I honk that, usually he comes here with like in you know, a Diet Coke Zero and like some, you know, God, almonds. I have your fentanyl all over me of no manners. <laughs> I know, I don't know how These I'm gonna clean. These are suede shoes. You think you're stupid? Oh, those actually are suede, suede they boots. They are. What are you trying to do? Give me to take this home? Well, you are gonna be able to take home a lovely uh, Louis Vuitton purse. There's nothing now, in that box. It's there empty. There is something in here. I no, just we can't. A, for legal reasons, we can't show it out because then you'd know the value of the prize that you win at the end of the show. And then we'd have to pay taxes on it. We don't pay taxes <laughs> on our fentanyl. We don't pay taxes on our prizes. So this is a little secret box. You know, when you open this up, you always get a surprise. And life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. What do you think about Forrest Gump? Well, I say the same thing about my vagina. What is that? It's a secret box. You never know what you're going to get when you open it up. What is that? Wow. See, I kind of like that because, it, listen, you've seen a vagina one, you've seen two vaginas, you've seen them all, you know what I mean? So we need a little... Hand mirror? Something in there to kind of, you know, change the flavor. I eat chicken ramen noodle all the time. Come on, sometimes I want beef, you know what I mean? They say that if you eat pineapple... It tastes better. Is it true? I don't know. I don't know. I've never, I've never had pineapple. I've actually never had fruit in my life. Um, it's I disgusting. thought you were a vegetarian. I only eat lettuce, yeah, and, and actually right. I eat Big Macs with no meat. That makes sense. Uh, you have a shrimp back there. Yeah, Why oh, and is that there? This is because I'm a pimp on a blimp, and this is our shrimp neck pillow. This is actually custom made. Where, listen, if you wear this on any boat and they throw me in the water, I can catch any shark. True. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They use me as live, live bait. bait. This is Jinx. what. This is part of it. This is part of life, and if you think about it, life is always a, uh, it's always kind of a live bait situation because do you ever feel like when you walk into a room and your cleavage is showing, you're looking good, do you feel like a piece of live bait in a way? Um, I mean, I, well, I, yeah. Yeah, because uh, listen, a lot of the crew, they're very professional here except for Jimmy. They've been looking at you, they've been Googling. I would be Googling. offended if I didn't, though. Like, if I walked in. So yeah, let it go back here. Let's just lie back, Lauren. Come on, lay What in the Lauren, world is your move? No, Lauren, yeah, here, there's a camera. I was trying to get comfortable. Look, get I didn't comfortable. Know I was Lauren, gonna, lay back. I didn't know I was a, a lazy boy. The camera's above you. So just Where's look, the camera? Right there above your head. That's us. So, so listen. Right there? Yeah, come on, girl. This is where we're. So, technically, we can say we slept together. So, just kind of take a nap oh, for 30 no, seconds. Yes, for 20 seconds. For 20 seconds, close your eyes, and we're going to sleep and then after the show's over it's gonna say Alex Hines sleeps with Lauren Compton so how do you get away 20 seconds sleeping 20 seconds on TV just it's a different type of show God. this is like okay. the worst nap no please ever. they're not gonna say we slept together close your no. eyes for legal reasons close your eyes and shut your mouth my please. boyfriend is gonna hate you don't this. tell your boyfriend are you kidding I don't want anything to do with your boyfriend knowing that we slept together temporarily on set Oh my gosh, if my boyfriend finds out, we're really fucked. Because my boyfriend, he he's getting out of jail in two me. weeks. I'm never going to eat again, you stupid vegetarian. Yeah, well, okay, guys. So 
Make sure to clip that. I don't think Jimmy works here anymore, but make sure I want that to say Alex Stein sleeps with OnlyFans Absolutely superstar. Absolutely not. Yes, we, did we not technically sleep? I was dead asleep. I'm with sleep. a shrimp around your neck? Yes. It and, never happened. And it's shrimp somewhere else, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Because it's very small. It's actually very, it was, it was, part of it was burned in a fire when I was a young child. The tip? No, the, the mid to, the mid to base shaft. And they had to sew just kind of, it just kind of looks like a mushroom cap on like two. two Pieces small. of wood. Yeah, it's really Burnt bad. Wood, it's really charred bad. Charred wood. It's really bad. Just... My husband hates it when I, when I show him. He's just, and then my wife's boyfriend, he's disgusted by it too when we try to do a three piece. What does your dad think? My dad's actually very proud. Surprisingly, he's actually kind of happy that that happened to me because I love that you said that, and then all this fentanyl just came straight out <laughs> yeah, of your nose. It keeps on going. It just, honestly, every second I'll talk, I'll take a deep breath in, and I just get this, like, you know, high, and it feels good. It feels really good, which kind of, <laughs> now I'm starting to realize, like, why people like it, because, I mean, you just start doing this stuff, it feels pretty, pretty good. I mean, I, I mean, you know, choose your own. Back to your charred dick. Yeah, back to my injured penis. Well, listen, this whole show is not about my penis. It's really more about your breasts and what they're worth. And I'm happy that you're able to put a value on them because they are priceless in my mind. I think. See, those... that's how I feel. And then Playboy published all these free pictures on the internet, and I'm like, no. Sorry. No. So, 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 do you think Playboy is predatory? Because you know that's another thing. My favorite show. I was... think Playboy exploits women. They do. Yeah. Because yeah. I love the show Girls Next Door, and then Holly, and what were the Bridget, and what was the other? That was like 20 years ago. I know, but the show is good. Get an update on your MacBook Pro. Well, listen, first of all, I don't have a Mac. I only have Android. Um, uh, what I'm saying is the show showed them having fun. They're in Southern California. They're like, oh, woo, we're going to a movie premiere. Oh, this is like some fun thing. And then like years later, they all said that like Hef was kind of predatory. And Hef wasn't very nice to me ever. He wasn't nice. But I also met him right when Crystal ran away. Like they were supposed <laughs> that was to get the, That married. was his like newest wife that, that, that did was, the... Yeah, because Holly wouldn't marry him. So he was like, well, I guess I'll take the second best one. And I then, liked Holly. I always loved Holly. So did he, but yeah. she didn't love him. She liked Chris Angel, the magician. He's a weird guy. Chris Angel's a weird guy. It was odd. So then his runaway bride happened, and then I met him closely after that, two weeks after that. Did he hit on you? Did he try no, to date you? No, was, he was like so in his head, and he was just an alcoholic. He was drinking tons of whiskey. No, shut up. So Hugh Hefner in his old age was getting drunk, because he looked oh, yeah, he was like he, 90 he, or something. He, yeah, he looked his age. No, but let me tell you this. This is not even about Hugh Hefner. I always wonder that because listen, I'm probably not going to live that long. I'll be honest. I lost my mother recently. She wasn't in the best health. My dad's in okay health, but that kind of long story short is I'm not long for this world. And then I always think, oh, I'm not going to eat meat. I don't drink, right? But, you know, occasionally uh, I don't drink alcohol, but, you know, uh, occasionally I'm in California, maybe take, you know. 45 bumps uh, of No, cocaine. fentanyl. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You know, I'm not necessarily AA, but I don't drink alcohol. I don't eat meat. And, and I, for some reason, I'm getting fatter doing this. My whole point being is whenever I see these videos and it's like, woman makes it to 99 years old and the, the local news paper asks her what's her secret and she's like i smoke 20 cigarettes and drink five beers every single day how you know what i'm saying though it's always like that like you have i don't get to ever have that much fun no but you have no how does his liver not you know Kill out it on did. him. did. He's dead. Oh, yeah? Hugh Hefner's dead? Sorry. <laughs> I know. Hugh Hefner died? Crazy. <laughs> and it wasn't even of an STD. <laughs> I can't. Are you serious? We need that China drop. Is he really fucking dead? When did he die? When? Recently? No, he died today. Like eight years ago. Did he die today? Eight years ago. Let's say. Are you China. sure? Let me check. No, let me check. Hold on. China, Let's ask the China, chat. China, Is Hugh Hefner dead or alive? China. Chat. We are live. I see fortified bread, Alex. The boy needs meat. I probably do need meat. Uh, uh, do is is Hugh Hefner alive? Let me see that. Is that the live chat? Yes. Look at the live chat. We have 900 people watching. That's low numbers. Pick it up. Share the stream. All right. I fired Jimmy. I've lost the sound guy. I've lost the camera guy. Lauren's probably already blocked me. I'm high as a kite on Fendo. I can't feel my face. I'm probably, I'm literally, I'm, I'll be honest. I farted earlier and I shit a little bit. And so now I smell bad. I'm nervous. I have a little poop in my panties. It's just, it's been a hell of a show, Lauren. So how, how have you enjoyed your uh, time on the program? I have to say that my least favorite thing was sleeping with you. Well, uh, to be honest, that was my favorite thing we did tonight, so. Well, very, very me too. Yeah, you got me too by Alex Stein, so uh, tweet that, make sure to hashtag that. And before we end this program, Lauren, tell the people where they can support you and where they can follow you. 
if that sign didn't direct everyone already, you can find me anywhere at I am Lauren Compton. Don't touch it. I'm not. This is my Phantom of the Opera mask. How did, I thought you broke that. No, I have multiple masks. This is my COVID mask, COVID-19 mask. It's your Coke mask. It okay. Coke all well, over it. <laughs> well, Lauren, we do something. Except Very... for Twitter. Someone hacked my Twitter. It's Don't I'm follow her on Twitter. Lauren Compton. There's no A in and, it. And, and for all the people that are watching this, like that are anti-OnlyFans, don't do it. It's the worst thing you'll ever do. It's a, don't tell them. Tell them right now never to do it, Lauren. It's addicting. Once you go... Once you spread... You... Spend all your bread. Ah! Or once you spread, you get a bunch of bread. Oh, I thought you were saying, were we talking shit to them? Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I'm saying, are don't. Are we in favor of it or not? Well, I, you know, I'm kind of indifferent. I'm probably gonna look at your profile God, for a few hours so after the show. you're so wishy-washy. I'll be honest with you. You know, I am a little wishy-washy. Uh, that's just my personality. I kind of, you know, I, I'm a chameleon, as they say. Okay. Okay, well, all right, we end the show the same way every time with the freestyle finale. So, like any good rap music video, I need a video vixen so you can sit in the chair and dance or you can do nothing. But what do we do? What do we do? You're just going to sit there and, and look beautiful. Why? Primetime 99. Freeze. Oh, look at this. What a show tonight. I'm super extra white. And with my girl drinking Sprite, Lauren Compton dancing on only. I hope you got lots of plans to go. What? 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 Get out of my set! Get out and look at her twerking! We're flirting! That's how we do it. I don't care if they unionize. I don't need them. I can do the show by myself, butt naked. All I need is one beautiful OnlyFans model and my burned penis. And I can do anything. Nobody can stop me. So if you're watching this at home, just know I'm coming for you, baby. I'm coming! I love you. Good night.